Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about what the fingers are for in the bow hold. So let's take the, the fourth finger first. And it really should be on top of the bow because that helps to balance the bow. Now, if you take your fourth finger off, you can see immediately what it's actually for. Um, it's really to hold the bow up. <laughs> But there are plenty of pieces where you might feel on certain notes or in all of it that you want to have the freedom to not have to use your pinky. Uh, it can make your hand feel very, very free. The third finger is a bit of a mystery. Um, what is it actually doing? Well, it's doing a lot. It keeps the bow straight. But if you play without your fourth finger, you will start to feel exactly what the third finger actually does. placement of the thumb. A lot of people say that the thumb and the third finger should make a circle. As a matter of fact, I put my thumb in a more natural position, uh, which is there, which is just in front of the first fing the third finger, right? Because I don't want to move my thumb as far as that. I just want to put it there, which is more natural for me. The third finger doesn't really move much, it just makes a sort of kind of circle between it and the thumb to stabilise the bow, to get it very, very stable. The other thing is, where do you put your thumb? Uh, a lot of people put it in the space between the frog and the wrapping, um, and they place it there, but I've been moving my thumb onto the wrapping more, right? Away from the, the frog. And I find it much better for some reason to put it there. So let's go to the first finger. It really adds a lot of weight and strength to the bow arm, but also dexterity. And you'll see a lot of violinists straightening out the first finger as they're pressing down uh, with their first finger to get accuracy and power. course you can press too hard and not move the bow at the right speed okay then you get the crunch so it's all a case of balancing it out practicing and getting the the speed of the bow correctly when you're playing louder but the main difference with um, bow holds is that some people play on their fingertips and the fingers aren't really curved around the bow very much. And it's a little bit harder to get a lot of weight and heaviness um, and big sound when your fingers are like that with quite a high wrist, right? Um, because there's a sort of bend and a kink in the arm and really uh, loudness comes from arm weight down. So if there's a, a big kink like that uh, in your arm, it may be a little more difficult and it may be quite a good idea to sort of slightly straighten your wrist and bring your arm up a little bit so that the weight of the arm goes down into the bow hand. If you're playing... If you're doing a lot of that and your elbow is sort of quite far down, you may find it, find it difficult to find the power um, to play quite loudly and to vary your dynamic because the arm delivers, the weight of the arm delivers down into the bow hand and you'll see a lot of players 
sort of flattening a lot to get that weight and power into their bore. So that is something to think about. So another way of thinking about the fingers is not, not moving them too much, but allowing the um, flexibility in the bow to come from the wrist and the forearm. And your fingers are just following them. And there is a slight sort of rocking feeling of the bow arm being rather loose inside the hand, um, rather than coming from the fingers too much. I think too much finger movement really disturbs the direction of the bow like this and also um, affects the sound quite a bit. So if you're able to develop a bow arm where your fingers aren't moving excessively and most of the flexibility is coming from further up the arm, the wrist and the forearm, that's really ideal. So one of the best ways to find out what each individual finger is for and what it's doing in your hand is to lift that finger up, play without it, and then when you put it back it tells you exactly um, what's going on in your bow hold and what each finger's function is. For example, if you play some Bach without the fourth finger it can be extremely freeing, as long as it's not off the string or anything. without the last two fingers, without the third and the fourth, and he plays with just the first three. Um, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. But he has got huge hands, and I think he's sort of getting them out of the way a bit, actually. But I've got small hands and a very short fourth finger, which helps me just to lift it up a little bit and use my uh, third finger instead. So of course every hand is so different, different shapes, different shoulders, different arm lengths, different finger lengths. But when you look at YouTube and you see all these different violinists with different uh, bow holds, some have got high arms, some have got a lot of wrist movement, etc. But they all understand and they're all following uh, certain principles, but interpreting it and making it work their own way because of their own physique. So take a leaf out of their book and have a look at your own hand and your own fingers and discover for yourself what each finger is actually doing. And you may discover ways to unlock the potential uh, the sounds and to vary your tone between very quiet and very loud, which adds so much pleasure to your playing uh, and variety and expression. So um, I hope you enjoy having a look at your bow hold and in the meantime I'll say bye-bye. Bye! -bye. bye.